Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And we're going to get going here. Um, round two of questions from old celebrities. <laughs> old celebrities. <laughs> what famous are, historical are, figures. Famous, famous historical figures asking questions in this dialogue format. Part two. Yeah. Who asked last? I think we were on um, Rudyard Kipling times two. Okay, Rudyard Kipling, let's see. Okay, yeah, I think you're right, okay. Hmm, <clears throat> okay, so Sir Isaac Newton has a question for you. Okay, Isaac. What's All right, he, he says, for every action, there is an equal and opposite re reaction. Does the law of karma work similarly, where each deed, good or bad, echoes in eternity? <laughs> what a very, how very poetic of you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> say, uh, let's see. In terms of... Taking the question literally, which I probably shouldn't because it's poetic and blah, 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 is uh, it's not going to echo in eternity because there's nothing that echoes eternally. Mm. Unless it does, I don't know. I've heard tell. Like Peter said some stuff about learning. He's like, you know, we can learn infinitely. What? Or the relative existence keeps going. He's like, mm. the universe, what, do you think the universe stops somewhere? If, if it does stop, what's on the other side? <laughs> so then somehow the relative is also infinite. So maybe something could echo yeah. in eternity. So I don't know. Mm. Um, but in, ter in terms of, say the question again, it's g actions, good or bad sure. actions. Yeah, does the law of karma work similarly to, so for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction mm, physically. Mm. Does the law of karma work similarly where each deed, good or bad, echoes in eternity? Or I might say each each uh, action, good or bad, each deed, good or bad, has an equal and opposite reaction or some kind of reaction to it. Something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know about equal and opposite, but um, there are there, stuff happens. If mm. I do something, something tends to happen. Like consequence. I've got this thing about consequences and it's just, it's like, if I lie, I'm a liar. <clears throat> Mm. If I break something, it breaks. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. like, that's what happens. I don't know if it's equal and opposite, mm. but it's like stuff happens. If I, if I, if I have a thought, I might have something about that thought. That's just what happens regarding that. You know, if you put heat to water, it boils. If I think bad of myself, then there's there's a result of thinking bad of myself if i if i go do something physical there's something good you know or you, you know what i mean uh if i lift weights my muscle grows if i train something there's a consequence of training something and there's like mm. there's there's rules or or not rules, but like very predictable stuff. If I drop mm. something, it falls. Why? Well, there's stuff going on. So karma, I don't know what karma is or about that. And in terms of equal and opposite reactions, I don't know about that. But if I do stuff, stuff happens. <laughs> so you don't have any sense of like, okay, if you... If you kill someone, then later you will be 
killed or if you lie to someone then later someone will lie to you will be lied to or any anything like that does does do you have any consciousness of anything oh. like that as as existing because that, that's what i think like if i think of karma like literally like i do something bad something bad happens to me i do something good something good happens to me to me that seems like i don't think it works quite like that but what's your take on it oh like some sort of future something yeah i i think when when i first heard about karma i don't remember when it was i must have been a teenager or something i think that was kind of my idea of what it meant it's like if you do good things good things happen to you if you do bad things bad things happen to you and for every bad thing you do there will be a bad thing that happens to you for every good thing you do a good thing will happen to you and everything is based on that idea like every good thing that occurs to you every circumstance is from previous good actions from a previous life or from this life and same thing with the bad and um personally i i, I it doesn't seem to me like that's true it seems to me like there are consequences to all of our actions but a straight like one-to-one -one, equal and opposite karmic relationship or something i don't know about that it's like Buddha, you know, Buddha said something about anger. So maybe this will come up. I don't know. Said something about anger. And it's like the, the punishment, like you're not punished for your anger. Like you get angry and then you get punished. The anger is the punishment. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of hold it that way. Like, you know, I, I don't know if, if it's like going to extend out into the future in, in a sense, but I could, I could make an argument for that. What I mean by that is, Donald say say certain politicians they're not they're not good human beings the punishment is the fact that they live in this experience that is probably really shitty and they don't know mm. it mm -hmm. you know so they're living in a really rough experience that is the karma so I don't I don't know that it happens later it just that's happening now mm -hmm. or like if I am um um what was I going to say something like if if i if i break my word i've broken my word there's a there's an immediate consequence and then there's also a, if i do that a lot there's something deeper that also happens that i become a liar and mm -hmm. then i live in this experience that is that mm -hmm. and that's you know that's the karma mhm mm kind of like and and then and then it becomes even in a sense harder to reprogram my mind once it's built up this like solid way of going about things it's hard to deprogram that and so that could be like more longer lasting in the future karma but otherwise I don't you know I don't view mm. it that way it's just like okay mm. that makes sense yeah makes sense to me um buddha responded he said to mr isaac he said indeed every action of body speech and mind plants seeds that when conditions are right will bear fruit while the laws of physics you describe is about equal reaction karma is not always so immediate or directly proportional it operates over lifetimes always seeking balance hmm I'm a little skeptical of Buddha. Yeah, myself. I don't know about the balance part. Yeah. Yeah. But I but I hear what you're saying about um, you know, if you if you lie habitually, it becomes your character. Yeah. And if you and if and whatever your character is, that's going to shape your your destiny. That's going to shape your life. You know, to a great yeah. degree. And so if you are a habitual liar, there's going to be the inner experience of being a habitual liar, which is like, you don't trust yourself because you're lying all the time, but you also don't trust other people because, you know, they might lie like you do probably you have major trust issues. That's a terrifying world to live in, you yeah. know, and, you know, people stop trusting you eventually and yeah. No, no, no bueno. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then like the world becomes that. And then my, my future, of course, will be shaped by that, which I have programmed myself to like, it seems to be the way it works is if I program myself up a certain way, kind of like, you know, you get a new car and when you get a new car, you know, all of a sudden you start seeing those cars everywhere. Mm, yeah. It's like, cause you're now attuned to that. And then, so you're literally, you're, you start seeing stuff where you weren't seeing it before. So then whatever you program in your past is going to have your framework for your site in the future. So of course it will have like an impact on your future, you know, and how that comes up, Mm. something Mm -hmm. like that. And then that could be like a karma, you know? Yeah. Karma. Okay. Next question. Yeah. (laughs) Who's next? Uh, Who's next? Mr. Shakespeare. Will. Yeah. Okay. Love in all its multifaceted glory and pain has been a muse, a muse, a muse, a muse for many of my works. In your teachings, what is love's truest form and purpose? In your teachings, what is love's truest form and purpose? Good question. Well, here's William Shakespeare. Yeah. What is love's truest form and purpose? I don't know. I guess. I don't know. I had. I. I guess we're not talking romantic love here. To me, love is like, if, if you can love somebody like Hitler, then you know what love is. You know, what's the, what's the purpose? I don't know. The times that I've felt most love is when I've been most free, maybe. Mm. Or like, I remember just say, like when I had an enlightenment experience, I was, I was very loving. It was like the obvious choice or the the natural state or some such it was just very oh and i would put it close to something like acceptance or accepting or Mm. something like that like pure acceptance Mm. you know it's like Mm. no matter what the circumstance i can love that Mm. you know and there's like a I don't know what that is. There's a positive regard for the other's experience as well. Yeah. It's, it's acceptance and not to impose, but I would love for you to have a wonderful time. <laughs> like <laughs> kind of thing. Like, you know, it's better if it's better <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something, something like that. But tr- purpose, I, I don't know what the purpose is. Mm. And mm. its truest form, mm. yeah. Maybe there is no purpose. It's like, it's purposeless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sounds like you could make this question what is the nature of love yeah yeah like what's love's true nature yeah he said what is its form and truest purpose what is the nature of love yeah and uh Hmm. yeah i don't yeah i don't know where to go with that one per se. I almost want to say just keep going. (laughs) Yeah. It's worthy of really considering deeply, like, what is real love? Do I really love someone? If I'm in a relationship with this person, am I loving them truly? Or is it mostly about what I can get out of the relationship? Probably. Yeah, that's usually what happens, I think. 
I, I think for me, I've had relationships, um, you know, long lasting, you know, girlfriends and so forth. And um, I know for me, when uh, my child was born, boom, I felt a different, I felt love on a different level than I had whenever I was in a relationship with somebody. Yeah. That was different. Still is. Yeah. 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 That's something. But it, it, even that is self-serving. There's a self-serving ness to that, to that love too, but it's, uh, but it's still, it's like as if more pure or something. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or like a different, like it's not, it's not necessarily romantic. Well, it's not romantic, but it's it's more um, it's more selfless. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I remember something happened when uh, I watched I watched a woman give birth, mm. and that's I probably told you this story. It's a whole nother story. I'm not going to get into the details, but when the kid came out, something shocked my heart. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Yeah. I like, oh, I almost started to cry. Like right there, like, fuck, what's that? Yes. I did not expect that. Like everything softened out. I was like, oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Well, I, I, cause I, yeah, I, I resonate with that. My, my child was born. My son was born in front of me. And, uh, like as he was born, the, doctor passed him to his mom but she passed him like right by my face and i swear to you i don't even know if like infants can really focus when they're just born but my experience was like in a movie like like in the matrix or something when like time slows down when neo is dodging bullets yeah. Like it was like, and he looked me right in the eyes mm -hmm. and it was just like, oh, and then it sped back up again and he went back over to his mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's interesting stuff that can yeah. occur. And it's just occurring to me that 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 stuff is rare because how often do you get mm. to see kids being born that are yours? It's not often. Yeah. You know? If you're like Elon Musk or Genghis Khan, then it's like maybe more frequent. But... If you're really cranking them out, it's like once every nine months or so. Yeah. Well, you need a. Oh, anyway. Yeah, just... Anyway. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are logistics to consider, but there's you know, there's many possibilities. There's other possibilities. <laughs> just talk to the Mormons. They probably got some of that. Out. <laughs> I am not saying I'm for that, by the way. I'm just saying it's possible. He's, he's not saying he's against it either. He's just remaining neutral. <laughs> it's just my, it's my, my stuff is my stuff. <laughs> okay so what does buddha have to say about love's true purpose yeah yeah buddha said to will he says um will love in its purest form is boundless compassion and goodwill for all beings free from attachment or desire its purpose is to alleviate suffering and bring about well-being such love asks for nothing in return and knows no barriers. Boom. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> I haven't, yeah. That kind of love. And now, in its now, purest form, is pretty rare. Now, contrast that with your experience. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Contrast that description. Okay, we, we don't know for sure, but that description of that possibility, now mm. now what's the world that we live in? Mm. <laughs> I'm laughing, not very loving, is it? 
Isn't it full of all kinds of other stuff? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you have to love. I'm just saying, look at the contrast. Ugh. Question from another uh, famous celebrity? Yes. Okay. Uh, if we do this again, we should get more guests on yeah, the show. We get more guests on the show. The only so, six people showed up. We'll, we'll just get like a smorgasbord. We'll get a bunch. Yeah. Um, so Mother Mary has a question for you, Brendan. Mother Mary. Yeah. Yeah. She says, how can one maintain faith and hope when surrounded by suffering and adversity? No, you're going to have to create it. Ah. <clears throat> and then keep creating it. Create the faith and the hope and don't stop. Yeah. So let's see. Maintain faith and hope because it's, it sounds like in this case, Mother Mary is struggling with, well, I'm trying to do this good work, but all around me is a negative circumstance. How do I keep going? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You keep Probably. going. Um, you stay stay on track or, you know, in the world of Cheng Shin or something I'd call it, you know, align with the principles that make that happen and then keep doing that kind of like in a fight in martial arts and training and fighting stuff the, it is adversity the whole thing is adversarial mm -hmm. and how do you how do you perform in an adversarial situation you have to make it happen and you mm -hmm. don't give up just because things get hard or you don't you know as Peter would say, control your mind. You don't let your mind go off purpose. You know, notice when you are on purpose and stay on purpose. Why? Because that's what you're doing. You know, how do you do that? You do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't do other things. Yeah, there's like a whole bunch of what you don't do and then what you do do. Not poop, mm -hmm. but do. <laughs> <laughs> Good to clarify that. You were saying basically that you've got to align with a principle, create oh, right, faith right, right, and hope. But, yeah, if faith, because I think, and then I think there's something even greater than faith. Oh, well, I don't know. I see, because I don't know what she means by faith. Faith is usually like, oh, I believe in something. Whereas if I'm deeply entrenched in a principle, I feel like I do not need to believe or have faith. I'm aware of the power of the principle and I can create the power. Now, <clears throat> maybe that is a kind of faith. It's a faith in the principle, kind of like you have faith in gravity. Mm -hmm. There, It's easy to have faith in gravity because well, it works. So you don't, you don't even need to have faith per se and it depends on what she means when she says faith. Well, I think she's talking about faith and hope when surrounded by suffering and adversity. So probably it's it's things outside of like things like gravity and momentum and friction and stuff like that. More like yeah, and and she's also what's her name? Uh, Mother Mary. Mary. Yeah. She's she's the mother of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And so she, she might be indoctrinated into a religion where you have to believe in the higher whatever. I don't know. Well, Buddha said something similar. Uh, that you, It's sort of like you don't really have to have faith. He said, true faith is, is unshaken, not by external conditions, yeah. but by the internal realization of the impermanence of all things. Even if even in the face of adversity, if one recognizes the potential for enlightenment in every being and the transient nature of all conditions, hope never wanes. Yeah, maybe like you don't need hope or something. It's because there's always the possibility of enlightenment and everything else is going away. Yeah. So how could there be anything but hope? Like yeah. gravity. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, it's just what I take out of that is like the possibility for that realization is there. 
it's obvious. You can see it perhaps. And then it's like, well, I, I don't need to hope it's right there. Kind of mm. like there's, there's a, there's a brick there. I don't need to have faith that there's a brick there. There's a brick. Why it's right there. I just, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Joan of Arc has a question for you. Okay, Joan. She asks, facing persecution and death, how can one remain steadfast in their beliefs and maintain inner peace? Oh. Because, <laughs> you know, she got lit on fire. That's how she died? Yep, they burned Holy her. Holy shit. Well, I have not been put to that test to that degree. Um, so I'll start by saying, I don't know. However, I was put to the test in a certain regard because I remember there was a time where I really, really, really felt like I was going to die. And I was in the middle of doing some work. You know, I was in excruciating emotional pain. And I was working and I just had to keep going and I did. And I realized that there was more that I had more than I thought to give. Mm. But what, what's the question again? Yeah. Facing persecution and death, how can one remain steadfast in their beliefs and maintain inner peace? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I think there is another aspect to that. Again, speculation. I don't face persecution and death on the regular, so I'm not a pro. But if my thinking and mind is informed by something that, that is true, then I do not need to maintain a belief. It's, it's much, I think it's easier just to be like, okay, well, that, this is what's going on. I don't need to, I can just stay with that. You know, what's remarkable is how many of these answers line up with what Buddha has been chat GPT'd into saying. Yeah, that's kind of funny. It is. When one's convictions are deeply rooted in truth and compassion, external circumstances cannot waver the inner spirit. Inner peace comes from understanding the impermanent nature of life, the interconnected interco interconnectedness of all beings, and the true essence of the self. Even in the face of adversity, the mind that is anchored in this wisdom remains unshaken. Yeah. 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 And I can imagine what other people want. I do not read Buddha's stuff. I, had, I don't read that. I don't yeah. even, I'm not a Buddhist and I don't, I haven't even read the scriptures in just in case you're like, I've just looked into some things and done a lot of work here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that there is stuff that you can become conscious. Well, I mean, you know this, I'm saying this but like for other people, it's like there's stuff you can become conscious of that does not live or die that does not behold into perception. And yet it's true. Yeah. And when that's the case, then it's like my mind is informed by that. And it does, it is unshakable. Why? Because that's what it is. There's nothing can touch that. Mm -hmm. And so then I have access to the untouchable or access to the infinite, if you will. And then, then it becomes, it's like abide in that because everything else comes and goes. <laughs> Speaking of, let's hear from Adolf Hitler. Okay, Adolf. <laughs> Adolf, Adolf. 
Sir, I it hear you're having some good. mental challenges. How can I assist you today? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. Here's my question. Yeah, it's my question. <laughs> yeah, um, this is good. Yeah, this is good. Is there a way? <laughs> is there a <laughs> Um, um, is there a way for a leader to ensure the well-being of their people without causing harm or suffering to others? Hmm. Is there a way to ensure the well-being of their people without causing harm or suffering to others? Well, the, the only way that I can see that actually working, because it, it, I think the answer lies in our people. If our people is like Germans only, then in order to ensure that Germans are safe, sure, we're going to be smoking some fools that aren't German if there's an attack. Mm -hmm. But if we have our people as everybody... But I still ensure, don't see how to ensure the well-being of everybody. Ensure the well-being of everybody. I, I, yeah. Well, it depends on what you mean by well-being. I think because you, based on the on the way minds and people work, there's gonna be some. If you have good, there's bad. You cannot have good without bad. You can't have well-being without the the opposite of well-being. And in order, and, and given humans, the opposite of well-being, you know, stuff like murder happens. So how do you stop a murderer? You may have to harm them or, you know, so total control, no. I think we could do balance have it something that balances like a like an immune system in a body that yeah if, if stuff attacks the body your internal cells do harm to that kind of thing but then it balances out but but to to ensure the well-being without harming others i don't know mm. and and then definitely not if if you know, the well-being of my people is like my people. And then there's other people that are, are not my people. I think, mm. I think more in the direction would be it's us. No, no separation between us and us. Like, oh, well, I have a body with skin color like this. You have a body and you think differently, therefore in different skin color, therefore you're different than me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I don't know. Let's hear what Buddha has to say. True leadership arises from boundless compassion and wisdom. When one leads with the intention of the well-being of all, not just a selected few, actions align with the greater good. By understanding the interconnectedness of all beings, a leader can find ways to uplift without causing harm. True prosperity is built on the foundation of mutual respect and understanding. Yeah. Now I wonder, cause I, I had a friend, um, he is a Hindu and he was very critical of Buddhism. And I, I have not verified this in any, any, uh, any way at all so this is complete hearsay and it's only from this one source yeah um but he said that india was uh taken over um first by uh muslims and then by the british only after it had ad adopted a pacifist buddhist philosophy like an inclusive Buddhist pacifistic, pacifistic, pacifist philosophy, and mm -hmm. it made it easy to be taken over 
uh, first by uh, Muslims and and then the British. Right. Um, and so he was not not real keen on that, and uh, he oh. thought that. Yeah, he thought he thought that being like too inclusive was a recipe for um, a lot of not well-being. <laughs> yeah. Right. A lot yeah, of people I getting mean, that, killed and all that jazz. Yeah, I mean that that makes sense. That's why I was thinking in terms of like a global. If if it was, you know, have you seen the movie The Watchmen? <clears throat> yeah. And at the end of the movie, the Doctor Manhattan he's trying to save humans. And what he realizes is that the only way humans are going to unite and actually act as one is if they're facing an outside threat, mm -hmm. you know? So then he became the outside threat or something like that to get all the idea was to get all humans to unite. And I'm like, that might actually work. Like a mat, like independence day, the aliens yeah. come in, everybody gets together to fight them and the them is not on the planet so it's earth versus rather than mm. rather than individual components because yeah if you're a pacifist in india and then you have a whole country of pacifists and somebody else wants the resources then yep they'll just take over of course mm -hmm. but you don't fuck with them if you know they're gonna kill your ass when you go in there you're like ah uh, nah maybe not I'll look for yeah. better, uh, easier prey. Yeah. Yeah. The the Spartans held on to their territory for quite a while. And they were just feared. They had no walls around their cities. Right. I heard tell. <laughs> there you go. Because <laughs> they were like, we don't we don't use walls. We are the walls. If you yeah. want to fight? Come fight. Whoever you are, we don't care. That's yeah. But but then they were also they they uh they were slavers. They kept several different groups of people enslaved at all times. Mm. And um they were such fierce warriors because they did not have to do anything else except train to fight. Because they had other people doing every ah. other thing that was necessary for life for them. And if they got out of line, they would kill them. Right. And so they lived in constant fear that their slaves would rebel and they regarded themselves as invaders who had taken up permanent occupancy of that area and they just held it for like a long time. Hmm. With their so like they were like the opposite of the Buddhist uh pacifist philosophy. They were just like just constant warfare. But yeah. they did not expand. They didn't expand. They just held on to their territory. They were like, this is our spot. And that's the way it is. Interesting. And they, <laughs> no compromise whatsoever with anyone. Yeah. I, I was, as you were talking, I was thinking about compassion because sometimes people have compassion is like, oh, it's peaceful and loving. And I don't think compa I don't think real compassion is necessarily always peaceful and loving. It's like, no, I could hit somebody in the head and really get them to get something and it's violent and it's ruthless but it's for their good kind of thing <laughs> what's that come, come do a workshop come do a <laughs> workshop right you hear that <laughs> we've got sticks <laughs> it's ruthless <laughs> i have never seen anyone get hit during um a workshop that was not a boxing related workshop no in Shingshin. Not yet. Yeah. Um, okay, so maybe there's no perfect answer to that. I think he's asking about politics. He's like, what's the ideal political formula? It's like, good luck coming up with an answer to that one. Yeah. yeah. One, of, one of the last stories I think of, you know, Peter tells this story, it's like a Rumi or Mullah Nazardin story or something like that about a, I don't know, a snake. <clears throat> oh, what is it? Ah, oh, I can't remember the story now, but it's like there's a big snake and he comes to him. He's like, I'm tired of all the hurting people and the scaring people or, 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 or I'm just, I don't know. Like I want to, I want to change my, I, I fucking can't remember. 
um, King Cobra. He wanted to stop being a snake. Something like that. And then so he stops and all of the people beat the shit out of him. And then so he comes back all crippled and he's like, oh, I'm fucked up. He's like, I didn't say don't scare them. Uh, he's like i'm tired of biting people i'm tired of always killing people and biting them he's like i didn't say don't scare them you know are you looking up the story no i'm looking up a different one to prepare for further uh questioning but i'm i've got it is it ruby okay no 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 yeah what are you looking up? Um, actually, something by Rudyard Kipling. But mm. what you just said reminded me of um, the phrase my dad always told me, which is walk softly and carry a, carry big, a big stick. stick. Yeah. Yeah. Or better to be a, a, wa a warrior who does farming than a farmer who does not a warrior. Yeah, it's better to be a warrior in yeah a warrior on a farm than a farmer in a war. Yeah, yeah. And I I think there's something to that. Like I I think I learn how to be more peaceful. If I understand violence, I can be better at being peaceful. <laughs> well, yeah, and you're. I mean, you've spent years of your life training to throw people on the ground and hit them in the head. And you're pretty good at it. And yeah. then, but I've never, I don't know how many, how many, how many fights, like full out fights have you been in outside of that context? And I know you, you were, I don't know. Well, you can edit it out, whatever. You were a bouncer for a while. Yeah. Um, like rare. I mean, yeah. never pretty much. Yeah. But I, I know you can hit people. Yeah and uh and and major outside foot sweep them onto the ground and all that jazz so yeah uh it's not a it's not a so if if buddhism is a pacifistic philosophy it Which, and i don't think it is yeah. necessarily but if it was then it would differ from cheng shen because cheng shen is not 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 promoting specifically pacifistic ideology or anything but no. it's not also it's also not promoting going out and being an asshole either yeah and it's not promoting an ideology there you go just flat out there is no because yeah it's more like i guess it's more the spirit mm -hmm. investigate things grasp what stuff is if you want skill be skillful and grasp what that is so you can do it better then what you do with your life is up to you anyway all right so i don't know if there are any more questions from any more historical figures at the moment there may be one or two okay that's fine i think now is a good time to wrap it up okay all right well thank you brendan yeah um right close it down thank you come do a workshop Thank you. Bye.